Hello, YouTube. This is your girl, Carmen Kaboom, broadcasting live from hell. <laughs> Do y'all know that some people get kicked out of a club? Some people get kicked out of a, a ball game. Some people get kicked out of the locker room. I got kicked out of hell. And I'm glad about it. <laughs> the landlord, I won't disclose his name right now because of legal reasons. Because we're going to court. I've already contacted who I need to contact in that regard. It's totally illegal what he's doing and has been doing. So I'm all smiles. Gobble, gobble. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you that participate in this pagan holiday. I do not participate in it, but um, some people do. So those of you that do, happy Thanksgiving to you. So yesterday, as many of you recall, I went live with the landlord and you all heard how awful and unprofessional and heathen he acted with me. I'm not on camera, y'all, because I got on my cleanup gear. I'm cleaning up my stuff, getting ready to get out of here. And thank God that he has blessed me with transportation and alternative housing. And next week, I'm going to stay where I'm going for... Uh, no, it's so good. I did not remove the video. I put it on private because of my own personal reasons, because I don't want it to be live and public right now while I'm staying here, just in case he or somebody he knows happens to see the video. I don't want him to retaliate even further in that regard. So as soon as I leave, this place for good. I will be putting it back on public. And I think I should just wait until everything goes through the legal channels and then put it on public because I don't want to sabotage the legal process that I'm going to have to participate in regarding this awful devil. Ugh. And the only regret, I have no, absolutely no regrets about how I handle the situation. And the only regret I have is that I ever came here in the first place. And I saw his ad several times and I passed by his ad several times. But for some reason, I went back, I guess because I was desperate, and replied to his ad and it sounded so good. So as you know, as they say, a lot of times when things sound too good to be true, it usually is. I had no idea this man was this in much of a bad condition, spiritually and mentally, as he is. This man is sick, in my opinion. He's sick. And, you know, something is wrong when... And that should have been a red flag. He said he only wants to rent to women only. And then the next red flag, he installed those cameras inside of this house. Not outside. Ain't no cameras outside that I know of. And seemed like that's where the main uh, place you would put cameras. All this stealing going on and breaking in. It seemed like you would want to see what's going on on the outside of the house. But no, he's putting the cameras on the inside. In my opinion, I think he's a pervert. I can't prove it, but I suspect that he's a pervert. And it's just a matter of time. This this is a good setup for a Me Too hashtag Me Too situation. Somebody going to get possibly raped out of this house. And I thank God that it ain't going to be Carmen Kaboom. Thank God that Carmen Kaboom, I pray I don't get killed in here. 
somebody is going to be in trouble in this house. In the future, I suspect. Because this, this man, something is not right with this man, in my opinion. The red flags are all raised all over the place. In my opinion. And my instincts telling me that something is not right. And for those of you that don't have any standards, I highly recommend that you develop some standards. And no matter what, stick to your standards and don't let nobody cause you to conform to their ways. Dundee, it was the whole house. It wasn't a room, it was a whole house. But nevertheless, even if it was a room, it, it's the same situation, period, point blank. So anyway, um, yesterday, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. So yesterday, after he left, do you know he came back? The man came back. And something told me he want to get it started. He want to he wanna provoke me to act out. He wanted to give me a reason to act out so he could uh, put me out. He wanted to put me out because I talked, you know, challenged him. And talk to him the way that I did. And I don't feel like I was wrong at all. For standing up for myself. I'm going to stand up for myself. And defend myself regardless. I'm not going to let anybody violate me. If I can help it. Hello everybody in the chat. And I have no regrets. Because you know. I'm going to rent another place this week, just for one week. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the deposit down on me on a house. I need, I need, I, ooh, and I'm going to try to make sure that I interview the person real, real good. I thought I had interviewed this man real, real good, but he fooled me. He fooled me. You know, a lot of people have another side to them. They only going to show you their good side so-called good side in the beginning. So that's to be expected. So you never know these people until you know these people and you're only going to know them until you develop a relationship with them and you're going to have to talk to them more and have some experiences with them. So anyway, after he left, when I recorded the live stream and you all were tuned in, he came back about, I'll say, maybe two hours later, two or three hours later, and pretending like he's doing some more work. I'm so sick of him. Lord have mercy. I'm so sick of that man. And so I, the spirit told me to go ahead and document that I did not feel comfortable with him because I see where this is headed. We headed, we headed to a legal avenue with this. We headed to court possibly with this. And I have already contacted, like I said, the necessary resources that I need to. And I'm going to be contacting some more next week after this holiday is over with. So I text him to put it on record that I don't want to be around him by myself in this house anymore. So this is the text message that I sent to him when he came back. So this is to protect me once again in case anything happens and you know they're gonna be asking me well did you let him know that how you felt and you was uncomfortable with him so you gotta let the person know i've experienced this kind of stuff enough times to know that that's the main question that they're gonna ask you did you inform the person that you did not like what they were doing 
that you were were you uncomfortable that you let the person know you got to let them know so if they continue you've already got it on record that you have informed them that you have a problem with what they're doing and they continue so this is a text message that i sent to him i said per our earlier exchange today whereas i felt intimidated and disrespected by you after i informed you that i'm hold on ricky ricky skinner you say no need for court just move out you'll find peace somewhere else i know i know moving out finding peace blah 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 that is an option but you gotta hold these people accountable for their actions when they violate you. Otherwise, they're not going to learn and they're going to continue mistreating somebody else after you, Ricky. What about accountability? That's why we got so many awful people in the world doing what they're doing. We're not holding these people feet to the fire. I believe in holding these people accountable when they violate me. Now, you can handle your business however you want to handle your business. But Karma Kaboom, I'm going to hold you accountable when you violate me. I can't speak for everybody, but that's how I operate in my lane as it concerns my life. But I thank you anyway, Ricky, for your advice, nonetheless. Okay, let me read the text message all over again. Let me start from the top. Okay, it says, I said to him in the text message, per our earlier exchange today, whereas I felt intimidated and disrespected by you after I informed you that I'm feeling, that I feel that I'm being harassed by you relating to you coming every day for the past four weeks that I've been renting here and I'm being disturbed by you uh, banging on the doors, slamming and all of this other stuff relating to your so-called parentheses work that you initially said would be done prior to me moving in, installing cameras inside of the house after my move in and plans to do random house checks inside of the house i no longer feel comfortable being alone with you in the house and i would like to record all future interaction between us for my own safety and documentation moving forward while i search for alternative housing because this does not feel comfortable legal or professional to me he said you are paid up through tomorrow you will need to be gone friday we no longer accept you as a tenant at this house and i said it is unlawful to evict because i'm exercising my rights as a tenant and the law states that I'm supposed to be given at least one week to 30 day notice. And he says, there is no reason. I, I can't even understand what he's saying, but I think he's trying to say there is no reason rental contract with you as a tenant. I will bring the police with me and move you out Friday. And I said, fine. And I will, we will go to court about this later on. And I asked, can we meet tomorrow, which is today, Thanksgiving, to get my deposit back since I'm being evicted? And he says, I will see you Friday. And I said, what time? He said around 10 o'clock. So that was the last of our conversation yesterday via text message. So I've already documented all of that. And it's real good that he put all of that evicting me based on me exercising my right as a tenant 
it's good that he put all of that in the text message. So I'll be printing all of that out and, you know, attaching it to my complaint, lawsuit, whatever we're going to do. So, um, you know, I believe in standing up for my rights. And, you know, I believe, like I said, holding people accountable. And, you know, I've, I've been going through hell with this man. I've been going through hell. And I've been kicked out of better places. I've been kicked out of better places. I don't mind getting kicked out because I'm, I'm, I'm going through hell with this man. I'm going through hell with this man. And th I shouldn't be going through this with him. You know, because this this feels like something else. The man said that he was going to be finished working on the house when I moved in. But he continuously is trying to create some work to do to have an excuse to keep coming back. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I think I surprised him yesterday by saying what I said. And I, you know, you all may disagree, but I think I was being very respectful. I didn't raise my voice and I just said what I had to say to him. It was on my mind and it's better to tell him rather than go behind his back talking about it to, to, to YouTube or whoever else. I believe in telling people how I feel about them to their face, you know, and they can take it however they want to take it. If something is bothering me, I'm going to let you know that what you're doing is bothering me. And we're going to go from there. You know, some people don't have proper communication skills. And as a lot of you heard, he is, in my opinion, lacking proper communication skills. And that's the first thing that you need to the first principle that you need to master. When you're going into business and the so-called business and you interacting with the public, you need to have you need to develop proper professional interpersonal skills with the public. You know, you can't just be acting all ghetto and ratchet and and, you know, ha have your ego all in your way and, and talking to people however you want to talk to talk to them. And do like you want to do based on your personal feelings. No, but I, you know, he doesn't have to take my word for it. You know, he's going to learn as he goes. And I'm guessing this is his first time, you know, ranting. I don't even know nothing about the man. I don't know nothing about his history. I don't know nothing about his background, but he's a uh, awful individual in my opinion based on my experience and I just wish that I had known that he was the type of person that he is and how he handles his business you know somebody might deal with him you know and not have no problems and like he said ain't nobody never complained but you <laughs> but ain't nobody else paying my rent but me so I'm not, I can care less what other people got to say and what other people's opinion is and what other people experiences is. I'm being affected. I'm being impacted. I'm being adversely affected because I can't get no rest because of this man. And when I see a man more than I see my husband, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. And he want to pretend like he don't know that it's a problem. This is normal. This is okay. No, it's not. And people will, some people will violate you until you stand up for yourself. And I believe in standing up for myself. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Even if you are the devil, I'm going to stand up to you and I'm going to tell you how I feel. And, and we can go however, which way we're going to go with it. And I mean that no matter how much my life is threatened because my life is not my own. My life belongs to God and God is inside of me and God is more powerful than any man out here on the earth. I don't fear no man. I don't care. And he tried to intimidate me with he got a license to carry a lifetime gun carry permit. I don't give a fuck about his gun, his license or him or the hole that he crawled out of. Let that be understood. I don't care nothing about that man. 
And all I want is some peace and quiet and, and to be able to enjoy where I'm staying at. That's not too much to ask. That's not too much to ask. The man is infringing on my rights and violating. He, he invades my privacy. What if I want to walk around in, in this place naked or just my panties and t-shirt and let my stomach hang down, both of them? What if I want to walk around my wig off? I can't do none of that because this man is in my way every day, every day. He probably somewhere looking at the camera on his phone right now. This place is on his mind. I think I am on his mind. And he probably looking at, I, you know, I was talking to somebody last night. It's a reason why he got them cameras on this inside this house. And he only want to rent to women. And like I said, this is a feature possible hashtag me too situation. This house right here. This is a possible hashtag me too situation. And I probably see it on the news later on another year from now or less. This is going to be a hashtag me too situation. It's just waiting to be a hashtag me too situation. And I was telling somebody yesterday, I wonder, do he be uh, getting his cell phone and zooming in on the on the camera and looking at my booty and 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 you know making it large and watching my booty shake and jiggle or whatever while I'm walking across the floor or standing at the sink <laughs> washing off the chicken. Is he looking at my titties? What is he looking at? And I said, this 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 feels so freakish. It feels so creepy. It feels real uncomfortable. And I ain't never heard of no mess like this. And I don't think a whole lot of people are going to go for this. And, you know, they might do it like me. You know, go for it for a little while. And then they may say something. And one thing I learned from him yesterday, he's not going to tolerate no woman objecting. He don't like for women to raise, raise their concerns to him. And he sure don't like for you to raise your voice. Uh-uh. He that type of guy in my opinion. But um, I think he probably thought I was just a little ghetto girl and I didn't have a whole lot of intellect and he could just push over on me and whatever. But he soon found out yesterday and he going to find out even more that I'm very much an intellectual person. And what I don't know, I know how to contact some people that's more resourceful and more knowledgeable to help me handle the situation that I need help with. I can do that. Whatever I don't know, it's some people that I can reach out to that can help me find out some stuff and get some stuff done. And I'm not going to let nobody walk over me. I don't care. And being out on the street is better than being in the bowels of hell. <laughs> this is hell. It feels like hell. It feels like jail. Ugh. <laughs> Man, it feels like jail. And thank God I'm free. Thank God. And I've been in here cleaning up, getting everything together so I can get my deposit back tomorrow. And I'm so glad and thankful that I was able to find somebody on Facebook from that uh, group, that transportation group that was so nice. Oh my God, she was so nice. And she helped me move last night. It was an emergency move. And man, I was so grateful for that. And I think tomorrow when I get my deposit back, I'm going to give her a little extra tip. I'm going to give her a little extra because she was so nice. And I told her, you don't have to move nothing. I'm going to move everything. You just have to have the car ready. And she had a real big car and we was able to move the bulk of everything. And um, I got a few more things to move today, tomorrow, whenever she come back. And um, man, oh man, she is so nice. So nice and accommodating. She didn't have to move my stuff, but she did help, help move some of my stuff. She didn't have to put her hand on nothing. But she did. She's very nice. She says she's a Christian. And, you know, a lot of people say that they're a Christian. But I'm not impressed when you say that you're a Christian. Show me that you're a Christian. Telling me and showing me that you're a Christian is two totally different things. 
And a lot of people love to say that they're Christian, but their actions speak differently about them. But I digress. I love when people show that they are Christian. Don't tell me nothing. Show me what you are. And that'll speak for itself. But anyway, um, I'm very much encouraged. I'm very positive. And I'm all smiles. I'm all smiles. I don't care nothing about what this man's saying. I don't care nothing about what he's doing. I'm getting away from him. And whoever want to be subjected to his little mess, go right ahead. Sign up for it all you want. I'm opting out. <laughs> I'm opting out of hell. This is H-E-L-L. -L. This is hell. And it don't feel good. And I don't want to be in hell anymore. <laughs> and I didn't plan on being in hell, but I just happened to get in hell before I knew it, it was hell. So... You know, thank God I'm free. Thank God. Thank God. So anyway, um, yeah, he did, Britt. Yes, he did. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell his name later on. I ain't gonna tell his name right now because of legal reasons. I gotta get through this legal hurdle with him. But later on, I am gonna disclose his name because I want everybody to know who this is. And what they can expect if they rent from him. I'm, I want everybody to know his name and, and how he operates business. <laughs> man, I wish somebody had told me. I would have avoided this mess. And <laughs> man, oh man. But anyway, it is what it is. I know it. I know it. Uh, Jenny. Jenny says the landlord is supposed to give you 24 hour notice to come into your place. He needs to be taken to court. He is going to get taken to court. Uh, Jenny, he got a court date with his name on it. He got one coming. Who he got one coming? He got a court date coming in. And he comes, Jenny, he comes. He's been coming every day. Every day. He ain't came today. I guess he's going somewhere to. Sit at the table. Now listen at this. He don't he don't call himself evicting me, kicking me out. And I bet you he going somewhere today for Thanksgiving and pull up to some some table and praise the Lord and give thanks with that awful heart, that evil heart and that terrible spirit that he got sitting inside of that old old crazy body. <laughs> That old, ooh, that old stinking mouth. That old stinking mouth, grizzly bell face. I can't stand him. And how can you sit at a Thanksgiving table and give thanks and praise the Lord and all that stuff with that awful, awful heart and that awful deed that you just did with yourself? How? But you know what? Like I told somebody last night, God is not going to let you mistreat his children and get away with it. You may think that you're getting by. You're not going to get away. God going to punish you good. He may cause you to be in a car wreck, a real terrible wreck. Somebody could hit you head on and you might live and, and just be disfigured and fucked all up and, and bedridden for the rest of your life. Or you might be in a coma for 25 years. You know what I'm saying? Or he might kill you dead. From cancel, you know, may go to go to bed and not even wake up no more. You know, all kind of terrible things can happen to you when you mess with God's children. He's not gonna let his children be oppressed, and he's not gonna let his children be harmed. And the person that's harming them get away with it. No, no, no. But anyway. God knows how it's happened, and I serve and I believe in God, and God is still providing and taking care of me. I don't care nothing about what the devil doing, because God is in full control, and God owns it all. And the same God that blessed me before is still blessing me now, and going to bless me again and again and again. I don't give a fuck about the devil and what the devil and the demons doing. Because that's they on their job. They doing what they supposed to do. They here to steal, kill, and destroy. They on their job. So 
those of us who are God's people, we got a job to do too. We got to stay on our job because they stay on their other devil and the demon. They stay on their job. So we got a job to do too. We need to stay on ours. And that's how I feel about it. So anyway, uh, Toya says he is violating house. I know he is and he going to find out. Toya, he pretend like he know everything and he doing what he's No, he not. And, you know, until you hold the people accountable, they will continue to violate. So you got to hold them accountable. And that's what we will do. Toya says he is violating housing laws if he has cameras in, on the inside without your knowledge. Take photos of the cameras in every place around the house. Uh-huh. Well... How could I how could I not know that the cameras are there? Well, he might have some hidden cameras. I don't know. I don't know if he got some hidden cameras, but I do know he got two of them. I do know he got two. Uh, Eva says, yes, perverts usually have a plain Jane wife, which was a red flag. Yeah, he got a little pug-faced wife, plain Jane. She kind of chubby and docile. Most of those kind of guys, they love them kind of women. That's real docile and, you know, submissive and won't question, won't say nothing back to them. Just go along and do what they tell them to do. Won't say nothing back to them. Won't challenge them when they're wrong. And I don't know why. Well, why should I ask? I don't know why. A lot of men, they can be married, but they still have a perversion. They still have a perverted spirit. They still want to look at other women. They got some fetishes. They got some uh, fantasies that they want to explore. You know, they can have a wife. That don't mean nothing. A lot of men got a wife, but they still homosexual. They still having sex with a man. They still playing in little children uh, clothes. They still uh, doing like this man doing. Got a wife and, and got cameras up in here and want to look at another woman. Ain't that a mess? Ain't that a mess? Ain't that a mess? But he want to pretend like it's for my safety, lying motherfucker. You know, a lot don't care who tell it. It's as long as it gets told. And people will try to fool you if they think they that you are dumb and they can just bump you on your head. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the more that we went down this road, it became clear to me that this is more than what it looks like on the surface. And, you know, God gave us all five senses. And a lot of times when you feel something is not right, that's because it usually is not right. And this has increasingly felt like it was not right. And like I asked him yesterday, where are we going with this? I mean, you just keep on doing stuff. Keep on adding stuff. Why you didn't say all of this was going to be going on at the top in your ad when you first put your ad online? Why you didn't say all of this was going to be going on? You're going to wait till I move in and then start doing all of this stuff. This, this, is, this is not what I signed up for. This ain't what I wanted. I don't, I don't uh uh, no. And, you know, if I don't say nothing now, you just going to keep on and keep on and keep on. Next thing you know, I might be in here getting raped. Next thing you know, I might be in here sucking on his old nasty penis. Forcefully. Possibly. <laughs> you know. Man, goodbye. I'm not going for this. And then that so-called uh, property manager that he said he got. He he brought her over here. She looked like, a, in, in my opinion, she looked like any kind of street whore. That is not no for real property manager. I don't believe it. I'm not convinced that that's a real property manager. And like I said on the other live stream, I went on her Facebook page. It don't say nothing about no property management, no professional this, that, or the other. She done worked at this little place for at-risk teenagers. That's what it say on her Facebook page. And I used to work there myself when I first came to the city several years ago. 
And that girl is not no for real property manager. That's just a title that he done gave her. And I don't know how they done got hooked up. I don't know where he found her. I don't know where she found him. But anyway, they hooked up. And ain't no telling what they for real relationship is all about. But you know, a lot of that is going on. That ain't none of my business. But anyway, I don't feel right with him or her just dropping by at random and looking through my stuff. That's an invasion of privacy. And I asked him, like I asked him yesterday, how would you feel if I dropped by your house if the shoe was on the other foot and I just dropped by your house when I get ready, looking through your stuff and, you know, breathing all over your underwear and looking in the refrigerator at your beer. Oh, you drink Miller Lite. Oh, you drink uh, Budweiser. Okay. And you might have a deal, though, in your uh, nice thing. That's your privacy. You might have some porn under your bed. That's your privacy. That's your business. Even the homeless man on the on the side of the road or up under the bridge, he got a right to privacy. His dignity should be respected. You wouldn't go rambling through his box or his shopping cart, would you? No, that's his stuff. And everybody, all human beings deserve their stuff, their privacy to be respected. I don't care who you are, you know. And this, this is this is so degrading to do somebody like that. And that's why he wouldn't even answer the question when I asked him, how would you like for me to do you like this? He couldn't even answer the question. He just turned around while he was on that ladder and looked at me. Because he know this is absurd. He know this is out of order. But anyway, you know, this is an experience. We all going to have experiences in this life. And this is an experience for the book. And I will be talking more on this. I want to be an advocate. This has provoked me to be an advocate and be a voice of reason in situations like this. I want to be an advocate for people in situations like this. And I'm going to be doing some more conversation relating to this topic in the days ahead, God willing. I'm not going to stop this right here because this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And I feel like more people need to hear this. And, you know, this is this is one of the pink elephants in the real estate room. And maybe more people are being impacted and nobody wants to talk about it. Maybe the people that's being affected, maybe they're embarrassed to say anything about it. Maybe they afraid of retaliation. I don't know. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a voice for this. I'm not gonna shut up. I'm not I'm gonna move on, but I'm not gonna shut up about this. This is awful. This is awful. And I know if he has did this to me, chances are I'm not the only one that he's did this to. And I'm not gonna let him do me like this and get away with it. No. I'm not, I'm gonna keep on talking about it. As long as God gives me breath in my body and until I get tired of talking about it. And I'm not tired yet. Hmm. And I don't think I'm going to get tired anytime soon. I'm going to keep on talking about it. As long as God allows me to talk about it. But anyway, um, I'm not going to stay long. I decided to just come on and brief you all about this right quick. and continue packing my stuff and maybe give me a little rest and move on out of hell. <laughs> out of hell. I'm getting out of hell. I don't get kicked out of hell. Thank God. Thank God. So let me read a couple of y'all's comments and then I'll go. Okay. King Law says legally he can't kick you out. He has to give you proper notice. <laughs> let him do like he want to do, uh, King Law. And I'm going to do what I need to do. Okay. That's the way that that's going to go. 
So I ain't, I'm not worried about Satan. I'm not worried about Satan and whatever Satan is trying to do and doing and blah blah blah. I don't care about Satan. I'm gonna we're gonna take care of Satan. So I ain't worried about Satan. And it's gonna benefit me later on. So, you know, a lot of times when we are attacked by Satan, he makes it look like it's intimidating, it's this, it's that and that. But it's really a blessing in disguise. You know, a lot of times Satan could be setting us up for a blessing, but we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to be patient. We're going to have to go through the fire and endure the flames in order to get to the other side of it. And it builds character along the way. And a lot of life experiences, that's what it does. It builds character and it teaches us. And we'll be able to help somebody else along the way who's experiencing the same or similar set of circumstances. And that's how I see it. And, you know, life goes on and we enjoy better circumstances after. But it, as long as we live, we always going to have some type of foolishness to deal with because we got some foolish people out here in these streets. We got some foolish people in the world. So it ain't going to never stop. It ain't going to never stop as long as we got foolish MFs in the world. We just might as well get ready for it. That's the way that it is. And it's nothing that you do yourself. And some people may say, well, you doing this and you ain't doing that. That's a lie. That's part of life. We got stupid motherfuckers in the world. So as long as we got stupid motherfuckers in the world, we're going to have to deal with stupid ass shit that they do. And that's the bottom line. You, we can try to make better choices, but you still gonna have to deal with stupid motherfuckers along the way in some capacity. And ain't no way around it. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish it was, but it's not. Because stupid motherfuckers serve Satan. And Satan, this is his domain. The earth is his domain. He goes to and fro in the earth all the time, seeking whom he may devour. He don't never take no break. He don't never take no day off. He don't go on vacation. He don't take a bath. He don't take a nap. This is what he do. He just go to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's the bottom line. Um, uh, Eric says, you can stand up for yourself, but that will make them try to come for you more. Because they know they getting on your nerves. That's fine too, Eric. But guess what? I got God in me. So when they coming for me, they come for God. And, and I don't think they can handle that. <laughs> you know, they already defeated. And that's an illusion. Them coming for you. I don't give a fuck about them coming for me. <laughs> I don't had a lot of people come for me. You know, you win some, you lose some. But I'm not going to bag down. Off from no fight. You understand me? I don't go looking for a fight, but I'm not going to bag down from one either. I'm going to always defend myself and my name and my honor, no matter what. And I mean that. I mean it. But you can handle your business however you see fit. I'm not no coward. I'm not no punk. And I'm going to handle my situation with courage. I'm going to be courageous and bold, you know. I'm not going to have no fear for nobody but God. But anyway, you all have a great day and we will talk again real, real soon. Holla at you, girl. Peace.